Welcome back. Links in the description for the playlist if you don't remember what happened last time. We're continuing on with the story. Sometime later, the family receives some exciting news. Zenith is pregnant. Everyone is happy until some more unexpected news comes out. Lilia is also pregnant, and Paul is the father. It does happen that fast in the anime. There is like a month in between when each one is announced, but the anime just kind of shoves it together and makes it one right after the other. Rudius isn't surprised by this news. In the level, he already knew that Paul was sneaking into Lilia's room at night, specifically after they found out that Zenith was pregnant. So he couldn't get any from Zenith and started going for Lilia. Rudy was actually ready to help Paul, and he was going to cover for him and lie and do whatever he needed until Paul confessed, and at that point it was already too late. Pathetic. No, maybe I should compliment him on being an honest man. Maybe he couldn't bring himself to lie because he's always lecturing me. Oh well. I kind of like that side of him. This is the worst possible situation, though. Paul said it himself. Womanizing runs in the family. <laughs> so Lilith plans on helping Zenith give birth, and then her baby's probably going to be born around the same time, too. And after that, she's going to go to her hometown. And it makes sense that she would stay for this. I mean, the entire reason that she was hired in the first place was to help uh, Zenith give birth to Rudius. Her hometown is to the south, and it will take about a month to get there. So she is planning on traveling for an entire month right after having a kid. Zenith is pissed about the situation, but that plan could lead to Lilia and her baby dying, which isn't what she wants. I mean, Lilia's been there for six years now, so they have become friends. And yet now she is pregnant with her husband's kid. So she is conflicted. I can picture Lilia collapsing in the snow with her baby, clear as day. I don't want her to die a pitiable death either. When I get rained on, she draws a hot bath. On cold nights, she leaves out blankets. And most important of all, he knows about the holy relic, but hasn't told anyone. It's time I repay that favor. Mother, I'm going to have two little brothers or sisters at once, so why is everyone so gloomy? Because your father and Lilia did something bad. But can Lilia say no to father? What do you mean? The other night when I passed Lilia's room on the way to the bathroom, I heard father was saying, spread your legs if you don't want it to get out. Rudy, what the hell are you saying? You keep your mouth shut. Lilia, is that true? No, absolutely not. I see. You can't openly admit it, of course. In the light novel, Rudy guesses that Paul has some kind of blackmail on Lilia. And in the anime, it's pretty much the same way. But in the anime, Lilia denies that that is true. While in the light novel, she doesn't say anything at all, which makes Zenith think that it's true. Paul helped me out with Sophie, but he dug his own grave this time. Sorry, I'll make it up to you sometime. Mother, I don't think Lilia did anything wrong. It's all father's fault. I suppose. It's not right for Lilia to suffer for something father did wrong. I suppose. Besides, they'll both be my brothers or sisters. Mother, I don't want to say goodbye to Lilia yet. <sighs> All right, fine. I can't beat you, Rudy. Lilia, stay here with us. Your family now. I won't let you go off on your own. Okay, it should all work out fine now. It's up to Paul to patch things up. Dear, we're going to have a nice long talk about this later. Y yeah. Crisis averted. Uh, for now. <laughs> it's more like pushback more than anything. <laughs> but for now, Brutius has figured out how to put all of the blame on Paul. Which, I mean, he's got his own fucking fault, I guess. <laughs> Paul's not a bad guy, but he's also not a great guy. <laughs> I love the characters in this story because of how flawed they are. They're realistic. Paul and Rudy are a big example of this this early on. Rudius is trying to live a good life in a new world, but still has a lot of hangups from his past life. Paul is trying to live an honest life and be a good dad, but he can't keep it in his pants. <laughs> the anime skips over an important scene here. After Zenith walks off, Rudy follows her and admits that he was lying about Paul blackmailing uh, Lilia. And Zenith knew that was a lie. Zenith knows Paul well enough to know that he wouldn't blackmail a woman like that. She did know that he is likely to cheat on her. That's partly why she was so calm during the family meeting. She thought that it would happen eventually, but she wasn't really expecting it to happen this soon. Why was I saved? It was me who seduced Paul. 
Hearing them moaning every single night gives even a maid pent-up urges. I'm honestly amazed I held out this long. Wait, they were having loud sex every night? With other people in the house? That's just fucking rude. Scream into a pillow or something. <laughs> I deserved to be punished. Punished for giving into desire and betraying Zenith. But I was forgiven. That child understood exactly what happened and smoothly guided the conversation to a compromise. The anime goes over how Lilia viewed Rudius when he was a baby. Man, we've already got it in the light novel earlier. I'm kind of in agreement with moving it to this point, though. I think it works better for the flow of the story. No, I'll stop all that now. He saved my life. I have to spend my life repaying him. If the child I'm carrying is born and grows up safely, I will have it serve Rudius. Rudy is getting nothing but wins every time he argues. <laughs> I mean, he got everyone to accept the situation without anyone getting kicked out, and he got Lilia to respect him. I mean, it was at the cost of Paul's respect, but I honestly doubt that took that much of a hit. <laughs> Nine months later, both babies were born. Two girls, Norn and Aisha Greyrat. Well, it's Aisha in English. It's Aisha in Japanese. I'm probably just going to go with the English. Yep, we just skip over all the family fighting. There's no time for all that. But all that sex earlier, that needed to be covered. <laughs> Apparently Zenith had a rough time this round. It was a breech birth, which means the legs came out first, and there's a risk that the head gets stuck. And it was so bad that Lilia, who is again supposed to be the midwife here, had to call in a second midwife. All that stress caused Lilia to go into labor that exact same day. Now in case you don't remember, this is like two to four weeks early. And we don't get any exact dates or anything, this is kind of my guess, but I think that lines up. Luckily, everything worked out for all of them. Both kids are born and they're fine. Both mothers are fine. Everybody's doing good. Since that day, Lily has gradually started talking to me. Surprisingly, when they were younger, Lily and Paul studied swordsmanship together. Back then, Paul had talent, but hated practice and goofed off. To make it worse, he assaulted Lily when she was sleeping and deflowered her. I'm sorry, what? I tell you, the more we learn about Paul, the worse and worse he looks. <laughs> Paul was 19 whenever Rudy was born, and we learn in the light novel that it was six years since Lilia last saw Paul, which means that he was 13-ish when he did this. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there and not make any comments. <laughs> Putting it mildly, Paul is scum, but despite all his faults, I respect this man. Why? Because he's strong. What are you staring at me for? You want to become a cool guy like your dad? Is it cool to cheat on your wife and almost wreck your family? Well, if you've learned your lesson, then please limit yourself to mother. Lily is fine too, right? Mother might go back to her parents' house without a word next time. You're a man. You get it, right? What is a seven-year-old supposed to get? Come on. You're all over, Silpy. That girl's going to be a beauty someday. Well, I'm sure she will, although I think she's pretty cute as she is. See, you do get it. Paul is scum. And so is Rudius. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's not really the same. Or is it? I mean, Rudius is like, what, 40 and mentally? Could this be considered grooming? Look, I'm not about to try to figure that out in this video. There's going to be a lot of morally questionable things throughout this story, and I'm probably not going to get too deep into those topics. It's not really what I want to do with these videos. In the light novel, Rudius got to see Paul fight some monsters in the forest. He got to see just how strong Paul actually is. And that's the reason he still has respect for Paul. Without having someone around who's that strong, it's very possible that Rudy would have slipped into being an asshole himself. So, essentially, Paul is what kept his ego in check. In the anime, Paul brings up school since Rudy is at that age but he doesn't really need to go, so the subject gets dropped. And this is actually two different conversations in the light novel that they just kind of combined into one for the anime. In the second conversation, we actually get more info on labyrinths around the world. And I'll try to summarize this the best I can. Basically, mana-heavy caves attract monsters, and then those monsters mutate and become even stronger. Adventurers come in wanting to get rich quick off of the mana crystals in the cave, and they fight the monsters. 
a lot of people die and armor and everything gets left behind in the caves and then those get enchanted with magic over time which then just fuels the fire for more adventurers to come in. Paul really tries to push Rudius to become an adventurer but by his own words he is more interested in chasing skirts like his dad. Also the order is kind of switched around here. In the light novel, Lilia talks to him more. He learns more about Paul's past. Paul and him have that conversation that they have while they were training. And then the kids are born. So the conversation with adventuring and school and all of that happen later on. Sophie continues her magic training and steadily improves. Rudius watches her growth and recognizes his lack of it. He feels stuck. Neither his magic nor his swordsmanship is growing. Are you going to leave? Maybe. There might not be much I can do in this village. Sylphie freaks out and practically tackles him. No, don't. Don't go anywhere. All right, I understand. I won't go anywhere. Why would I go away and leave a girl like her behind? To improve my magic? What do I need to do more of that for? I'd rather spend my time peacefully with Sylphie in this village. It's not mentioned in either version, but he is going through the exact same thing that Roxy went through. She sat and watched him constantly improve while she really wasn't improving at all. I mean, it eventually got to her, so she left town to try to get stronger. Rudy is going through the exact same thing, but this time Sylphie is holding him back, both figuratively and literally. <laughs> It's briefly discussed in the anime, but the light novel really leans into him wanting to groom Sylphie. I mean, he has the chance to turn her into everything that he wants in a girl. He's decided not to do anything intentionally, but in this moment, he almost gives in. In the anime, this takes place at their meeting spot by the tree, but in the light novel, it actually takes place in his room and directly leads into the next scene. A letter from Roxy arrives for Rudy. Dear Rudius, how have you been? It's been two years since we parted ways. How time flies. I'm currently staying in the Sharon Kingdom. I've been hired as the Seventh Prince's tutor. His Highness is a lot like you. He learns magic quickly, although not as quickly as you, and he's clever. He also spies on me when I'm changing and steals my panties just like you. They do say that great men have great lust. Oh yes, I finally succeeded in mastering King Class Water Magic. I thought I had reached my limit, but I just needed to try harder. I suppose you may have mastered Emperor Class Magic by now. I'm excited, and a little scared, to see you again. I'll work hard to keep up with you. I doubt I need to worry, but if you're struggling with magic, please seek admission to the Renoa Magic University, which I told you about. Goodbye. I'll write to you again. Sincerely, Roxy. I probably could have skipped some of that, but a lot of that's going to come back later. And in case you're wondering where she is, Sharon Kingdom is down here, and this red dot that is soon to be not red is the capital, so she is actually right here. Uh, and in case you need a reminder, Buena Village is somewhere up here. I'm not exactly sure where. So she started up here when she was training Rudy, and now she's down here. Wow, Roxy finally made it to Water King class. I'm impressed. Is it that impressive? It sure is. You could count all the king class mages in the world on one hand. By the way, you stole Roxy's panties? Crap. The light novel doesn't have Paul in the room as he's reading the letter. Or at the very least he doesn't say anything. Also in the light novel, Roxy states that she made a name for herself while exploring a few labyrinths. So she took some time to be an adventurer before she went back to tutoring. And this is actually what landed her a job with the royalty of the kingdom. Seeing that Roxy was able to keep pushing forward, he starts to feel like he's being left behind. Maybe it would be a good idea to go to the university after all. The next morning, he decides to bring it up to his family. Father, may I make an unreasonable request? You see, I haven't been improving lately, so I want to enroll in Roanoa Magic University. But when Sophie caught wind of that, she cried that she didn't want me to go. I was hoping that we could both enroll together, but her family isn't as well off as ours. So I was hoping you could pay tuition for both of us. No. There are several reasons. First, you're still learning the sword. Also, you're smart, but you're still young. 
I can't neglect my parental responsibilities. In the light novel, Paul says that 12 is the earliest that he will let him leave, because that's when he ran away from home. Then there's the money. Just you would be one thing, but we can't pay for Sylphie too. I understand. May I ask for one more thing then? Please find me a job, as well paying as possible. By the time you decide I'm ready to leave home, I'll earn Sylphie's tuition myself. That won't be the best thing for Sylphie. Yes, but I think it will be for me. Fine. I'll see what I can do. There's no way this is going to end well. <laughs> in the light novel, we get Paul's thoughts on this, and he actually recognizes the problem. Sylphie is becoming too reliant on Rudy. At the rate things are going, she will not be able to handle life without him. And Rudius has Paul's blood in him, which means that he will probably end up doing something stupid in the future. <laughs> He'll either find other women to sleep with, or he just won't pick her at all once he starts to have more options. Paul doesn't want Sylphie to have a hard life simply because she's too attached to Rudy. Paul also thinks that this will end up hurting Rudius too. He is becoming more reliant on her also. So he puts a plan in action to solve this problem. Days later, Rudius and Paul are training out in the yard when a wagon pulls up. A beast person steps out of the back. Hey, long time no see, Ghislaine. Since you're here, I guess that means everything is good to go? Yeah. Master Rudius, we'll miss you. Take care. We'll be looking forward to your return. Uh, hang on, what are you... Rudy, if I told you to stay away from Sylphie, how would you feel? I wouldn't want to, obviously. I figured. <sighs> if I tried to explain everything, you'd just argue your way out. Paul picks him up and hurls him across the yard. As soon as Rudy lands, he sees Paul rushing in to attack. It's very obvious this is no longer practice. Instead of relying on the sword, Rudy summons a fireball that explodes in between them. Paul is unaffected and continues his assault. Rudy creates some distance and turns the ground into mud. Paul is only stuck for a second before he gets himself free. With a leap forward, he uses Water God style and completely knocks out Rudius. Paul is very self-aware right now. He knows that he can't argue with Rudius, so instead of relying on words, he just knocks Rudy the fuck out. <laughs> the beginning of this is different in the light novel. He doesn't see Ghislaine before the fight and he doesn't say goodbye to anyone. Paul just asks him the question while they're training and then attacks him. Rudius wakes up on the wagon, with the beast woman sitting across from him. Hello, my name is Rudius Greyrat. You're awfully polite for Paul's son. I'm Ghislaine. Starting tomorrow, we'll be working together. Again, in the line of old, they've never met before. This is literally their first time meeting. And also, he's tied up for some reason. I, I don't know. He burns through the rope pretty easily. She throws a letter at him. Read this. I can't read, so do it out loud. My beloved son, Rudius, I'm sure that you have no idea what's going on. I'd tell you to ask that muscle brain strong woman, but she's got muscle for brains, so you wouldn't get a decent explanation from her. What was that? She stands up with enough force to shake the wagon. Uh, please sit down. That was a joke. She relaxes back down into her seat, and Rudius continues. I'll cut to the chase. I got you your job. You'll tutor a nine-year-old noble in Roa. The woman with you is her family's bodyguard and sword instructor. I hear she wants you to teach her too, in exchange for training you. She is a sword king. I can promise you that you won't find a better sword instructor. I've never beaten her, even once. Except in bed. From everything we've seen, we know that Paul has... Stamina. <laughs> Both versions like to remind us any chance that they get. And Ghislaine is not uh, objecting to it. <laughs> the Light Novel also adds in some info on money. Ghislaine would normally charge two Azurian coins per month. For some perspective, Roxy was paid five silver coins per month, and the average person can live off of two silver coins per month. So a king level swordsman can charge about four times as much as a saint level mage. Rudy is going to be paid two silver coins per month, and a promise for tuition to the Magic University for two people once the contract is up. 
For the next five years, until you turn 12, you'll teach reading, writing, and arithmetic, and magic there. During that time, I forbid you to return, send letters, or make any contact whatsoever. That's because I sensed you were beginning to depend on Sophiette. I decided that wouldn't be good for her. You'll work, earn money, and live independently. I can't wait to see the person you'll become. Your wise, awe-inspiring father, Paul. This honestly doesn't make sense to me. I mean, feeling like Rudy and Sophie were developing a dependent relationship that wouldn't work out for either of them is a fine reason to want to create space. But one of the reasons for Paul saying no is because Rudy is still young, and then he just goes and sends him away anyway, and says that he's not allowed to contact them. So it doesn't really follow from his comments earlier. But it's... Paul, so maybe I shouldn't be expecting well-thought-out plans here. <laughs> P.S. The young woman is fair game, but hands off the strong woman. She's mine. I see. Send that letter to Zenith. Will do. Paul is his own worst enemy. <laughs> I can see this being a bit of a joke, but I also am not sure that Paul is in the best position to be making these jokes. I'm really surprised Zenith is still with him. <laughs> Anyway, Rudy is okay with the situation. I mean, he's not like super happy about it or anything, but it's fine. He actually understands that Sophie needs to learn to be more independent, and that's not going to happen with him there, and vice versa. He was feeling stuck, partly because he was becoming complacent. He was perfectly okay with just living a simple life with Sophie. So maybe this change will actually help him grow too. In the light of what we get Paul's perspective after he knocks out Rudy, he is very impressed at how well he fought. He actually says that Rudy is downright terrifying. <laughs> it was a surprise attack that still took three steps to get to him. I mean, more like lunges, but whatever. <laughs> he says that two steps would have been too many in order to take down a mage normally. And Paul about needed a fourth step if Rudy was a, a tad bit further away. In fact, if Rudy had gotten both of Paul's feet stuck in the ground, he probably would have won. I'm sure to Rudy it looked like it was one-sided, but Paul is very well aware that if he didn't take this seriously, he was going to lose. Laws and Sylphie show up as Paul is throwing Rudy into the back of a wagon, and she just straight up fires off a wind spell right at Paul before she even knows what's happening. I mean, he does block it pretty easily, but he says that it's a spell that would have killed a normal man. Laws explains the situation to her as the carriage is leaving. I mean, she's not happy about it, but there's really not a whole lot that she can do. We also get more of Zenith's backstory. She was born in the holy country of Melisse, which is this part down here. I think it's this whole section that's part of the country. But uh, let's see, the capital is here. And we don't really get where exactly she lived. My guess would be the capital here, but... Again, I don't know for sure. She was she lives somewhere in this section. And again, Buena Village is way the fuck up here. So it's pretty far away. <laughs> she was nobility, the second daughter of a count. Overall, she was pretty obedient as a kid and always did what she was told. And basically, she grew up sheltered in a strict religious family. On her 15th birthday, she had a fight with her family and ended up leaving which is a very common occurrence in this world, apparently. <laughs> she was on her own. She was able to use intermediate level healing, so she tried being an adventurer. But the first group that found her took advantage of her ignorance. They started paying her below beginner level pay while telling her it was above intermediate level pay. And that was probably only the beginning. She thinks that they would have ended up using her as a meat shield if needed, or you know, just raped her. What are these, the, the goblins from Goblin Slayer? No, they wouldn't have paid. <laughs> Lucky for her, Paul ended up stepping in to get her out of that situation. Now, it is Paul, so of course he didn't do a very good job explaining, and Zenith actually thought she was being kidnapped. <laughs> Alina Lise had to explain what was happening. And you're not misremembering, she hasn't been brought up in the story just yet, but she will be later. And after that, Zenith actually joined Paul's group. And it doesn't say how long they were together, but after a little while, she learned that Paul is a womanizer. Big surprise. <laughs> even though she knew about that, and even though she was a firm believer in monogamy, 
she was still interested in him. So she told him that he could sleep with her if he stopped sleeping with other women, which he agreed, which <laughs> was probably a lie. <laughs> that one time got her pregnant, and then Paul married her to everyone's surprise. <laughs> and that's where the story starts. I didn't realize that their romantic relationship was that new, but I guess they are young, so I guess it makes sense. We also get a little story from her perspective after the girls are born. She has a lot of the same feelings as Paul, where she doesn't really feel like a parent because of how good of a kid Rudy was. And even at this point, she still has mixed feelings on the affair. She recognizes that Rudy is the reason that everything worked out, and she is trying to move forward. Before that incident, she also thought that Rudy didn't like them because of how unemotional he is. It reminded her of her older brother, who everyone said was an upstanding guy, but she didn't really like all that much because he seemed to not give two shits about the family. But after the family meeting, and now that the girls are here, it's apparent that he loves all of them. There is an interesting thing in the light novel that I'm a bit confused about. It says a few times that Lilia became Paul's second wife after everything that happened, but he doesn't have sex with her again, at least not at this point in the story. It seems that she got the title of wife, but I'm not really sure how she is treated like a wife. Like, she is definitely treated more like family than a maid now, but it's more like an in-between of family and maid somehow. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably just confusion on my part, but I don't think the light novel is very clear on this. And that is the end of arc one, and I really don't have a whole lot to wrap up here. Unlike ReZero, there's not a whole bunch of timelines to keep up with, so I really don't have a whole lot to clarify on this. But we've just barely gotten into the story. I'm looking forward to seeing how Rudius handles this world as he gets older. But for now, that's it. I'll have the next arc out when I get to it. <laughs> that's it. See ya.
Sometime later, the family receives some exciting news. Zenith is pregnant. Everyone is happy until some more unexpected news comes out. Lilia is also pregnant, and Paul is the father. <laughs>